actually I am. I've been retired for a number of years now, um, but in a previous life, I uh, did um, industrial dynamic balancing for 33 years on an ongoing basis. Um, in uh, the early years, in the early 70s, we were using strobes and we had to uh, do our own calculations manually using uh, vector diagrams. By the late 70s and through the 80s, analog balancing machines uh, came about and uh, that really helped us out. That was uh, a lot more productive way of doing this work. By the mid 90s, the digital uh, leading edge uh, balancing machines came about and we had those and um, balanced um, pumps and uh, turbines and electric motors and fans and large paper mill uh, rolls, um, rotors that weigh 20 pounds or 20,000 pounds, uh, single plane, two plane, multi-plane flexible rotors with uh, like 20 feet, you'd have half a dozen correction planes in it. In 1994, I built a balancing machine, a three horsepower, variable speed, belt drive, 500 pound capacity on a um, saw bearing design. Uh, still in use in that plant present day. But I've never balanced a lawnmower blade on a homemade apparatus using a budget oscilloscope before, but then neither has anybody else. So let me give you a quick tour here. Um, this is just a wooden frame, L-shaped, a three inch hinge. One side is fixed, being propped up at about a 30 degree angle by the use of this half inch copper coupling. The movable side is near vertical, 3 8 threaded rod. This is a 5 16 fender washer drilled out to 3 8 sandwiched between these two nylon lock washers and tight so that the washer turns with the rod and it is the OD of the washer up against the hinge that forms the bearing. A little bit of lithium grease on that, a little bit of lithium grease here. These are also 3 8 nylon lock nuts, but they're um, spaced a little bit. They act as a thrust, but they allow the rod to turn freely. That's the uh, stethoscope that we built here on this channel. It sits in this saddle. This is a inch and a half ABS pipe cut about three eighths above the center line. And this inch and a quarter body snaps right in there really nice as you saw when I put all this together. There are two half inch nuts underneath here that act as standoffs. The bottom of the saddle was uh, countersunk for the wooden screws that I used and it holds the uh, contact point of the stethoscope against the hinge uh, at the proper height. This is an inexpensive hall sensor, uh, even at Amazon about 10 or 11 bucks. There's going to be a small magnet on the blade and each time that the blade will go by, it will give us a reference point. It is being powered by the 5 volt reference box that we also build on this channel. I'm using the uh, Loto OSC482 oscilloscope for this project today. First thing I did was clean this blade. I took a wire brush to it. Um, there was uh, a lot of uh, caked on uh, crap, uh, rust, uh, enough to uh, influence the balance of this thing. So got rid of all that. I also touched up the edges with a file. I just drew the file across them. They weren't in that bad a shape. 
So the blade is clean and sharpened, ready for balancing. Some people use these little uh, cone balancers. Uh, they're not all that friendly with these uh, proprietary uh, star-shaped holes. Some other people will use nails. So uh, let's try that. finishing nail in here. Lay the blade on here. Let's have a look at that. Wow. Looks like it's balanced. Actually, what about here? Because I think I could argue that the center of gravity probably goes through this blade at the point of that nail. From that tip across to that tip, if you had a horizontal line, let's have a look at it. Uh, sitting pretty good there too. Even though I used a very small nail, smaller nails than a lot of people use, a small finishing nail, there is still enough friction on the OD of that nail against the uh, steel of this blade to prevent it from really being a good uh, way to do a static balance. Better if you're going to do static to do it on a knife edge. And the back of a hacksaw blade can act as one. So put this on here. Level it up a little bit. Now, you'd be surprised at how easy it is for the eye to know if that blade is in the center of that hole. And I can tell that that side is a little bit heavy. So I'll show you this. If you look at that blade, you would be able to tell if it was slightly off, you'd quickly tell. So this works not bad. So what if you manage to uh, static balance this thing fairly well uh, using this method? Uh, good to go, right? Yeah, maybe. Let me show you something else here. This is the hub that adapts the blade to the engine shaft. Pretty heavy uh, gizmo. Here, let me show you something. You'll notice that the keyway is part of the hub, for one thing. And I'll also tell you that the shaft has two keyways cut in it, 180 degrees apart. 294 grams. And there's no sign that uh, it was ground or drilled or any kind of uh, attempt at making sure that this is balanced. Now, you might be content that you've got a statically balanced blade, but once you made it with this hub and it's spinning at 3000 RPM, uh, I think all bits are off. It doesn't matter that much. I mean, it's just a lawnmower, right? Well, there's some people that will hit stumps and everything else with their lawnmower, bend the blade, bend the shaft, and they'll keep on mowing. Uh, there are people that uh, drive to work uh, with the uh, muffler dragging behind their car. There are people that go to the mall in their pajamas. That don't make it right. The uh, tolerance is on something that spins 3000 RPM like that. And uh, this is a fairly heavy assembly relative to the engine. Uh, the tolerance is, uh, you'd be surprised at how exacting that, that would really be in uh, industry. And we'll talk about that. Let's 
crosses. Oh, it's in there. You'll remember when I first demoed the stethoscope, I uh, emphasized how um, the, the only way this is really useful is if you have a, a very good point of reference. So when I did this particular waveform of the uh, fuel injector, I was able to uh, time it with the command of the fuel injector and pick up on the stethoscope as it listen to that sound exactly as the pinto made some noise as it lifted and made some noise as it dropped again. Without that reference point, we would have never sorted out that particular wave within all the other noise that this thing will pick up. It has quite a nose. It will sniff out everything. So it's doing that here. There's a lot of noise that uh, you can hear it. Um, that's going on and without a good reference point we're done we'll never be able to pick out the information that we uh, are seeking out of this so let's uh, activate that uh, hall sensor i've placed uh, the small magnet that comes with it on the blade right in line with it and exactly 180 degrees opposite that at the very same spot I put a small 1032 nut, same weight as that little magnet, and I've held it there with some electrical tape. So that counter acts the weight of the magnet. All right. Like I said before, this little sensor powers nice with a five volt reference box. We've put the uh, hall sensor on channel one. It's going to be our trigger and we have the stethoscope on channel 2. Important to note, I'm not using the stethoscope um, custom probe settings that are on the database on H scope. We're going raw uh, one time on channel 1, one time on channel 2 as well. Also important to note is that with the uh, orientation of the uh, piezo in here, when you're using the raw voltage, when the pressure is applied against the piezo, you go below zero. When the pressure is relieved, you go above. So if the weight, if the one end of the blade is heavy and it comes along and applies some pressure on that hinge, transmitted through this stem onto the piezo, we're going to get a minus. It means remove weight. That's how we can think of it. Going forward, we're going to uh, call the uh, tip of the blade that has the magnet uh, on it as the reference tip, zero degrees, and we're going to call the opposite and the non-reference tip, 180 degrees. On the reference tip at zero degrees, I take a dime that weighs two grams. It's an intentional uh, unbalance that I want to create. I want to do it for proof of concept and I want to do it for um, confirming the sink that the magnet and the uh, hall sensor are positioned uh, correctly here that uh, at the moment of uh, unbalance uh, is exactly the moment of the trigger of the hall sensor. Let's give that a spin. Uh, is with the hall sensor 
it shows that weight needs to be removed. That makes sense. We added a big fat dime on there, right? Okay. No weights at all, correction or deliberate or otherwise. Let's see what the blade condition is. Tell that at our um, hall sensor reference. 
reference point. It no longer calls for the weight, right? So that small 0.2 gram correction weight confirmed that uh, we did take too much and, and that uh, I do have to grind the opposite side and I'm going to go through with it. All right, so the non-reference end has to have ever so slight amount. units 
So let's calculate that. It tells us that at a one inch radius, we're allowed 1.9 gram inches. Okay? So if we move our radius out to 10 inches, which is divided by 10, we're allowed 0.19 grams to be within tolerance at the tip of the blade where we're doing our grinding correction. And I repeat, that's not a very uh, exacting uh, tolerance in this kind of work. G16 is, uh, is kind of low on the bar, but um, adequate for uh, this lawnmower blade. Okay, I felt that after that second grind that uh, the blade was balanced. Um, we're going to try to confirm that by uh, we know what our tolerance uh, grades are and that uh, 0.2 grams is all we're allowed. So I think it's even better than that presently. So what I've done is I've taken one of those aluminum uh, washers that happen to weigh 0.2 grams and I've taped it to the reference end of the blade. I've added an equal length of electrical tape on the opposite side, no washer. So we're only looking at the weight of the washer here. And yes, the weight of the tape matters. So I'm going to remove all the weights off of this. I want to point out a couple of things. I've got a couple of center punch marks here in line with the uh, key that's on the hub so that it was balanced in this fashion and when installed in the lawnmower it's going to be reinstalled with that key lining up with these two center punch marks. So um, this, this isn't easy. okay, and. Uh, I think it would be very difficult without the automotive module of 8-scope because um, you, you need to be able to scroll through your work and really have a look at what's going on and uh, otherwise uh, I think you'd really, really struggle with this. I hope you enjoyed it. We're done here. That's going back in the lawnmower. You can take it to the bank. These guys take care. what minus 32 decibels here at uh, 50 Hertz the speed at which that blade turns compare that to the uh, previous video where we did a check on this before we balanced that blade at uh, the amplitude at 50 Hertz what an improvement and uh, I mean you stand beside this thing it's like perfect beautiful